It's lightweight. It's small enough to be deployed in urban environments. It's armed with a powerful 105mm cannon and a highly accurate targeting system. And it is not a tank. So what is it? What has the US military spent over $1 billion developing in recent years? The death of the tank has been a theme in many military circles for the past decade or so. With fighting increasingly moving to tight urban environments, the ubiquity of precision airstrikes and artillery, the increasing potency of portable anti-tank weapons like the Javelin and Enlor, and the growing presence of easy-to-use missile and kamikaze drones, many military experts have questioned the staying power of the main battle tank. Case in point, traditional tank-versus-tank combat has been rare in Ukraine. To further complicate matters, Russian tanks have all too often proven easy pickings for their Ukrainian enemies armed with portable anti-tank weapons or drones. Yet, the idea of the death of the tank is also an exaggeration, despite all these advances in technology. Even as traditional tank duels wane, tanks and other armored fighting vehicles remain useful for storming positions and supporting infantry attacks, which is why they have proven an important part of the war in Ukraine even as their traditional role has diminished. How is the United States Army adapting to the changing nature of armored warfare? In June 2023, the Pentagon revealed some of the answers when it unveiled its first new tracked armored vehicle in four decades, the M10 Booker. The new vehicle is named after two soldiers, Robert D. Booker, who died in World War II, and Stephen A. Booker, who died in the invasion of Iraq in 2003. Private Robert D. Booker fought on the North African front. On April 19, 1943, he used his machine gun to destroy a German machine gun nest. He then advanced over hundreds of yards of open territory, making himself a target for enemy small arms and artillery fire as he guided his comrades' advance. Despite fatal wounds, he continued to do this until he expired. He was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor for his action. Staff Sergeant Stephen Booker was in command of an armored task force during Operation Iraqi Freedom during the Thunder Run into Baghdad. On April 5, 2003, in an attack on Baghdad's airport, his tank unit came under RPG and small arms fire by Iraqi forces. The machine gun on Booker's Abrams tank failed, however, so the sergeant exited the vehicle and got in a prone position on the turret, engaging enemy forces with his personal weapon and directing fire at the enemy. He destroyed one Iraqi vehicle in the process and protected his troops' flank from enemy attacks until he was killed in his daring action. For his deeds, Staff Sergeant Booker was posthumously awarded the Distinguished Service Cross, the United States Army's second-highest commendation. These soldiers' actions were the inspiration for the M10 Booker, whose task is, according to the Army Brass, to be an infantry assault vehicle that brings a new level of lethality to our ground forces and allows our men and women in uniform an advanced level of protection. The new armored vehicle is a more compact version of the M1 Abrams tank and bridges the gap between it and the Army's M1126 Striker infantry carrier vehicle. It will be more deployable than the Abrams and carry more firepower than lighter armored vehicles to give infantry units more options for protected fire support. While the Booker is not the first Army vehicle to be named after two soldiers, the Striker also is. Staff Sergeant Devon Booker is the first post-9-11 soldier to get such an honor. The first M10 Bookers are expected to arrive in the US Army's ranks by the end of 2023. Initial operations testing at a battalion level will be held in late 2024 or early 2025. The Army's goal is to eventually integrate battalions of Bookers into its light infantry brigade combat teams, which include airborne units. With a weight of nearly 42 tons, the vehicle is too heavy to be airdropped, but can be transported via a C-17, making it easier to get to hotspots than the M1 Abrams. The M10 Booker, produced by General Dynamics Land Systems, is the winner of the Army's Mobile Protected Firepower program, which began in 2015 and was described as a high priority for the Pentagon. In June 2022, the Defense Department announced that the General Dynamics design for the program won out over its competitor from BAE Systems. The Mobile Protected Firepower program was meant to better integrate armor with infantry, as the M1 Abrams' main battle tank is not as easily deployable. It weighs so much that it usually needs to be transported by ship, which can take weeks. One Abrams can fit inside a C-17 if need be, but only one. In contrast, the Mobile Protected Firepower program 
wanted to create a more rapidly deployable armored vehicle that could easily project power with infantry or airborne forces. This is why the army is not calling the M10 Booker a tank or a light tank, and though this may seem an insignificant distinction, the army is serious about avoiding this term when it comes to the new vehicle. To understand why, it's best to go over a little history. Light tanks made their debut before World War II, primarily serving in scouting roles. They were designed to withstand small arms fire from infantry, but not to go up against enemy tanks because they would always be outgunned. However, the development of effective portable anti-armor weapons such as the rocket-propelled grenade ensured that their usefulness on the battlefield had ended even in a reconnaissance role. The M10 Booker does not resemble a light tank, but it also does not resemble a main battle tank. Instead, the army is using a completely different term to describe its purpose – mobile protected firepower. The Booker may have been in part inspired by a World War II-era vehicle called the M10 Wolverine, the first in the US Army to get the M10 designation. This vehicle had a 76mm main gun and was meant to provide quick, reactive, anti-tank firepower. However, it was primarily defensive in nature and more lightly armored than its M10 successor. The Booker is a much more offensive-minded weapons platform. The M10 Booker is not designed to fight battles against enemy tanks. Even so, the vehicle is similar enough to the Abrams that crews for that tank would need to only do short, transitional training to be ready to operate the Booker. In June 2023 at Fort Belvoir, Virginia, the Booker was officially unveiled to the public, and the Army awarded General Dynamics, the same contractor that builds the Abrams, a $1.14 billion contract to build and deploy the first 96 vehicles. They are expected to reach their units by the end of fiscal year 2025. This contract was later extended to add 26 more M10 Bookers and bumped the total price tag to $1.34 billion. Each individual Booker should cost about $13 million. The Army says that this will be less expensive than the cost of the modern M1A2 Abrams tank. The Army plans on purchasing a total of 504 M10 Bookers by 2035. The M10 Booker's primary weapon is a 105mm gun. This is smaller than the 120mm main gun on the Abrams, but much more powerful than the 25mm gun on the M2 Bradley. The Booker's main cannon will come with enough punch to destroy enemy armored vehicles, presumably things like Russia's BMPT Terminator. The gun is also capable of knocking out bunkers and other fixed fortifications. The turret is flexible, and if the need arises, the main gun can be swapped with something even heavier. The Booker's armaments will include the armor-piercing discarding Sabot Round, which is a spin-stabilized kinetic energy projectile designed to punch through thick enemy armor. The Booker will also come packed with high-explosive rounds for other missions, like clearing buildings, bunkers, or trench networks. That may not be the limit, as the main cannon is compatible with a broad spectrum of currently fielded munitions that can achieve lethal effects against a variety of targets. According to the Fiscal Year 2022 Director, Operational Test and Evaluation Report. The Booker's main gun will be loaded manually. It's worth noting that despite its assignment to avoid combat with enemy armor, the Booker's 105mm main gun is still powerful enough to damage or destroy most of Russia's main battle tanks. The Booker's secondary armaments will be a 50 caliber M2 Browning machine gun mounted on the commander hatch and a 7.62mm M240B machine gun mounted coaxially. The Booker's targeting system will be advanced, with a laser range finder and computer that can calculate where the crew should fire the gun to hit the target. These calculations will include compensation for a moving target or if the host Booker is moving. The fire control system is similar to that seen in the M1A2 Abrams, again proving the point of interoperability between the two units. Like the Abrams, the Booker will come with a crew of four. The commander will have an independent thermal viewer that can provide information from multiple directions. This is the Safran Optics One's Paseo Commander's Independent Tactical Viewer CITV, Long Range Panoramic Targeting Sight. The M10's targeting system could also be getting an AI upgrade in the near future. Doug Bush, the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Acquisition, Technology and Logistics, said of the possibility, over time, of course. The potential use of AI and targeting assistance, assisting the crew, you know, to sort data from advanced sensors, is something the Army is of course thinking about. And that's something that this vehicle down the road sure could perhaps benefit from that kind of technology. As it stands, that was not a requirement of course up front. But sure, potentially, as the sensors, 
and the computing power necessary to do that gets smaller, they could over time make their way into vehicles of this class. I think that's fair to say where we're thinking about it. In the near future, AI could help the Booker's crew sort and prioritize targets, although Bush was adamant that the Booker is not designed to be a fully automated vehicle now or in the future, and that human crews will always be the ones making the decision to pull the trigger. The Booker's tracks give it superior performance in rough terrain compared to other infantry supporting armored vehicles like the Humvee. The M10's tracked wheels are more efficient than other vehicles like it too, as they are lighter in weight, giving it more speed and maneuverability. Its maximum cruising speed will be 65 km per hour with a range of 305 km. The M10 Booker will also be able to go in places that the Abrams cannot go. For example, the Abrams is too heavy to cross some bridges. But because the Booker is only about half as heavy, it will be able to traverse those pieces of infrastructure, a feature in line with its mission for ease of deployment. As for deployment worldwide, two Bookers can fit inside a C-17, making these units much easier to deliver than their older, heavier brother. They will be able to deploy faster and further, making them ideal for rapid response to emerging situations. The Booker's design for ease of deployment means that it will be able to go almost anywhere that infantry goes. Urban combat would be a heavy emphasis. As more people are moving into cities, more fighting is also taking place in cities, a trend which will accelerate as the century goes on. Supporting infantry in urban combat will therefore be one of the Booker's primary missions now and in the foreseeable future. Infantry, in turn, can support the Booker. Urban combat in Iraq taught the United States the importance of integrating armor with dismounted infantry. In such an environment, infantry can move around in the tight quarters, spot priority targets, and relay that information back to the Booker, which can then maneuver into position far more easily than an Abrams would in such a setting. From there, the Booker's weapons would open up and clear the targets. The Booker is versatile in other types of terrain. It can navigate steeper hills than other vehicles. It can also move across valleys and cross rivers, giving it access to hotspots that the Abrams would find much more difficult to reach. Since ancient times, armor has always been a trade-off between mobility and protection, and that was certainly the case with the M10 Booker. Because it's lighter and more mobile than the Abrams, it's not as well protected by armor. Even so, it's a fairly durable vehicle, far more so than something like the M2 Bradley. The Booker's armor can hold its own against 30mm armor-piercing discarding Sabot rounds from the front. Meanwhile, the vehicle can withstand 14.5mm armor-piercing rounds on its sides. The Booker comes with explosive reactive armor panels, which disrupt common enemy anti-tank weapons like RPGs, preventing them from impacting the main vehicle chassis. There are also measures in place under the vehicle to protect against mines and improvised explosive devices. The engine's placement at the front of the vehicle can also provide additional protection. For example, if the vehicle were hit from the front, the projectile would not directly impact the crew compartment, giving the Booker's operators more survivability. This is in contrast to the Abrams, which has its engine at the back and invests heavily in armor at the front. Like the Abrams, the M10 Booker has a compartmentalized ammunition magazine, a feature designed to insulate the crew should the ammunition explode. The lack of this feature is one of the reasons why so many Russian tanks have been blown skyward in Ukraine in jack-in-the-box style explosions. The Booker is also well protected from above. Its turret is designed to withstand hits from anti-tank missiles and loitering drones. Drones that can perform reconnaissance missions in the air for a while but also dive on targets and blow themselves up. However, because of its lighter armor, the M10 Booker's job is not to get into direct firefights with the enemy. Another reason why the Army Brass adamantly insists that it's not a tank. Instead, the Booker is designed to stay behind the infantry and beyond the range of enemy direct fire weapons. From this position, the new vehicle will provide the frontline forces with fire support. If it needs to go into position to destroy a bunker or trench fortification, for example, it will do so, then retreat behind the advancing infantry. The Booker's crew would be in constant communication with their infantry comrades relying on them to direct it to safe routes free and clear of anti-tank threats. The M10 Booker also comes with smoke grenade launchers to enhance its concealability. The Booker will have less fuel requirements than the Abrams. Its 800-horsepower diesel engine can last for 24 hours, and the Booker will consume much less fuel if it's turned on but not in action, in contrast to the Abrams, which burns 12 gallons of fuel per hour even when idling. 
The engine itself is a Rolls-Royce MTU 8V199 power pack. 96 of these engines are on schedule for the low-rate initial production phase of the M10 Booker program. More engines will be delivered as the program moves into its broader production phases. It's the first time that the MTU serial production engine has been used to power a vehicle in the US Army's land defense program, according to Scott Hansen, the defense director for Rolls-Royce Solutions America, the American subsidiary of Rolls-Royce Power Systems. These six- and eight-cylinder engines are compact and come with high power. Despite promising signs, there have been a few issues with the Booker that will need to be resolved before the Army fields it. Early tests discovered elevated levels of toxic fumes when firing the main gun. The gun sent these toxic fumes into the main cabin of the tank. In early 2023, the Army explained that it was adding a purge system to clear the fumes from the crew area. By June, when the Booker was unveiled to the public, the Army announced that it had successfully fixed the issue. The M10 Booker's cooling system also needs to be improved so that the vehicle will need less maintenance and manage heat better, as it became overheated in initial tests under hot climate conditions. The Army said it would be working on a more efficient heat exchange, better cooling shroud, and larger fan and supply pump for the vehicle to overcome these challenges. Again in June 2023, the Army announced that the issue had been fixed, saying that the Booker would be able to meet all of its performance requirements in high temperatures. The Army is also researching ways to make the M10 Booker quieter. This is important because stealth is one of the advantages of infantry, but adding something like the Booker to infantry units will naturally make them noisier and easier to detect. Infantry units will also need to carry the capability to repair the Bookers on the fly. When commenting for an article in Military.com, Captain Matthew Adkins, who served as an infantry officer with the 10th Mountain Division in Afghanistan, said that anything mechanized will always break down or roll over in combat, and so having the maintenance capability nearby would be critical for the Booker to do its job. Despite these concerns, veterans of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars are generally optimistic about the new vehicle's place in the Army. Retired Brigadier General Andrew Hilms, an officer who was stationed only two tanks behind Staff Sergeant Booker on that day in Iraq, said that the new M10 would, when properly employed, help light formations rapidly mass combat power, penetrate a prepared defense, and harden themselves when performing security operations. Like many new systems in the United States Armed Forces, the M10 Booker is being designed with the idea of open architecture in mind. Because of this, it will be able to accommodate future upgrades based on the changing nature of its operational needs. Although this sounds modern, something similar has been at work with the Abrams which was one of the reasons why its basic design has stayed around for over 40 years. The M1A1 and M1A2 Abrams are vastly different from the original M1 Abrams. An all-new main gun and turret is just one of the upgrades that came when the M1 was upgraded to the M1A1, demonstrating just how flexible these armored vehicles can be. It's too early to tell how the M10 Booker will change, although it's being installed with AI-assisted fire control systems and anti-drone capabilities at some point is probably a good bet. Either way, the M10 Booker's open architecture design should make it an important part of the US Army's ability to fight and project power across all terrains for decades to come. But what do you think about the Army's newest tracked armored vehicle? Will the M10 Booker prove to be as important a game-changer for infantry support as the Pentagon is claiming? Is it, in fact, a light tank, despite the US Army's officers repeatedly saying that it's not? Don't forget to let us know in the comment section below the video. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more military analysis from Military Experts.